Hello everyone, this is a new video about total sulfur and nitrogen analysis in refinery and petrochemical industry. In this video, we will talk about why these parameters uh, are important for this industry, what is the chemical reaction behind the analysis, and how many metals that you can use in this instrument, and what is the reaction terminology, and, and last, uh, what to be what uh, points uh, to be considered as a lab operator and firstly I want to emphasize that this is not a brand advertising video because in our laboratory we have uh, different uh, instruments from Germany, Jena, from UK, Oxford, from USA, Thermo this is the last instrument that we have bought in, in this year and we have just completed our studies on it so uh, we will show um, from Netherlands elements let's begin importance of sulfur and nitrogen sulfur and nitrogen originally comes from the crude oil and in our processes we are converting the crude oil to the valuable products and at the same time we have to be remove these components from the product and especially in some units like hydro desulfurization units and NAFTA hydro treatment units, these components are vital. Because these components are catalyst poisoning and they are inhibit the reactions. And they have to be removed the, from the product before catalytic uh, conversion process. So how these units work and what is their purpose in this unit there they are uh, treatment unit mainly but there are some different uh, reaction occurs for instance the aromatics molecules converting to monoaromatics nitrogen compounds uh, turning to ammonia and they are removing the stream other importance of comes from the end products specifications for instance in in diesel specifications the sulfur uh, maximum 10 ppm and for instance petrochemical industry ethylene is maximum 2 ppm okay let's talk about the principle of the method the method is mainly based on oxidation reaction the sample goes to the 1000 celsius pyrolysis tube and the separating compounds sulfur dioxide nitrogen monoxide co2 and water occurs at the end of the oxidation reaction and the water is a uh, important uh, step for this system and i will mention on the um, devices how we are removing the uh, water on the reaction so what is the determination of principle these components for sulfur uv fluorescence and nitrogen chemiluminescence i know you are all familiar with with this terminology but for the good results you have to be uh, more info about the equation of the reaction let's look to equation on the table first fluorescence uv fluorescence for sulfur compounds it's understand from the name fluorescence is mainly from about the light and there is a light source in the system so sulfur dioxide with the light source it's turning to excited stage after that it goes to ground stage and emitting a light and the light detecting with the photo multiplier to the concentration and second is K 
chemiluminescence for nitrogen compounds. It's a bit different because there is no chemical reaction on the fluorescence. But on for this, there is a chemical reaction with the ozone. Nitrogen monoxide reacts with the ozone and turns to excited stage of nitrogen dioxide and it's again wants to go ground stage and emitting a light while turns to ground stage and this again detecting with the photo multiplier tube let's look up the devices we have a auto sampler and when you are using auto sampler you have to use uh, these vials and you are putting the sample on these vials and uh, making some adjustments on the sequence uh, in the in the system and you are getting away from the instruments this is the main part of this instrument it's a pyrolysis tube I have mentioned before it's 1000 Celsius centigrade and sample goes from this side and there is a oxygen and argon in the pyrolysis tube and reaction occurs in the system and with the carrier gas the sample goes to the purifier section and I also mentioned about the water and it, as a result of the oxidation reaction uh, some water occurs in the system and you have to be remove this um, water this is the most important consumable part in the system is called membrane dryer and the separated compounds goes to membrane dryer and there is a sound filter a special filter it is just water uh, trapping in the membrane dryer after that sulfur and nitrogen compounds and maybe it's your sample maybe consists some particle there is a particle uh, filter and dryer and ozone scrubber there is all consumable parts and if you have some dark samples you as a lab operator you have to be really care of these components if the color is turns to um, black you have to be remove and renew this particle feature okay we have tried to talk about the importance of these parameters and the device it's not only using for liquids it's also using for the gas samples for the gases you have to uh, need some vaporizer before the system okay um, thank you for watching if you have any questions please send us we will try to uh, reply as soon as possible thank you for watching have a nice day